Today was an interesting day. I mean, a lot of pros, major cons. Well, one of the biggest major cons was the uh, email I got from a Republican conservative senator telling me that he supports marijuana legalization. And his excuse was the GDP. Playing chess right now, so. And that's interesting because the liberal, um, you know, politician used the exact same excuse. The GDP. Well, no, he said, "Well, oh, the money for the state." Now, the interesting thing about that lie is, uh, it actually costs more money than it produces. Look at Colorado as one example, or California, etc. Not only is the uh, <laughs> all these major stores are leaving, which I think is kind of awesome personally, but you know. Yeah, like Walmart left Portland, Walmart left Chicago, Walgreens left Frisco, etc. Marijuana legalization and demographic changes and other what conservatives commonly claim is the liberal or democrat policies which is complete bs science is not political reality is apolitical you have to emotionally detach in order to objectively analyze and draw the correct analytical conclusion you can't have any sort of political bias or etc because it will blind and mislead your conclusions so uh yeah it's the marijuana legalizations contributing to violent crime, and so is demographic changes. It's objectively true. Might be mean to say it. Doesn't mean it's not true. So, uh, you know, where do you go from there, right? Sorry, this chess game. Like, I don't like losing some. <laughs> Multitasking. But... The Demo Democrat lying liberal politician was like, money for the state. Yeah, so Colorado, in its first year of legalization, um, generated a big, like, multi million dollar excess of marijuana tax, which they put into public schooling. Now, if you Google the literacy rate and the dropout rate in Colorado since legalization, it's actually produced more of a deficit than a profit. The uh, I think the literacy rate was initially hmm, how do I put that 30 odd percent, 36 percent, 38 percent, and now it is 56 to 58 <laughs> percent. So, all this money is going into public education, all this weed money, but marijuana is lowering the cognitive capacity of the general. Uh, <laughs> like you know student body i guess yeah um but even beyond that it also caused the increase in the dropout rate and the state sees every dropout as a loss of income so the uh marijuana legalization has produced more of a net loss than a net gain I mean, on top of that, you've also got the increased welfare dependency rate, homeless rates. And then, of course, the homicides, the suicides, the vehicular fatalities, and so forth and so on. This stuff is not cheap. For example, in Pueblo, Colorado, there have been entire clinics that have shut down because over, hey, I won, hey, over 80% of their uh, patients on Medicaid, and apparently a medical clinic cannot assist off government subsidized and funded health care alone. Mm. This seems to be a really simple concept. Production has to outweigh consumption. Socialism would work as long as you have more people producing than consuming. It never does. It fosters a, defendance, a dependency on the government. So that was interesting because that was the guy's uh, argument, the conservative, right, was, 
worded differently but identical to the liberal argument for marijuana legalization. The way he put it was the GDP, right? That is more important than all the lives destroyed by marijuana. He does not give a shit about the suicides, the homicides, the vehicular fatalities, even the rapes. There is actually, it's looked at as a date rape drug now because of all the rapes that have occurred during like marijuana deals and things like that. So it's really interesting to witness that this, right? The Republicans would be like, oh, yes, the Democrats, the Democrats, the Democrats are the bad guys. We're the good guys. And you're like, no, you're, you're clearly both just whores for money. <laughs> like, there are articles in the Washington Street Journal, for example, and they are from Democrats who are saying we need to stop decriminalizing and start recriminalizing. Because they are experiencing the harmful downstream consequences of legalization in places like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Portland, etc. For example, Whole Foods closes San Francisco flagship store after one year, citing worker safety. Let's look up another one here. Oh, man, where did it go? I've got so many of them. <laughs> there was a, uh, yep, there it is. Black Lives Matter, Walmart, Chicago. <laughs> Sorry about that. There it is. Yeah, I kind of, well, anyway, Black Lives Matter is Walmart on their, I assume their Twitter or their, you know, walmartinc.com. It's all of our responsibilities to embrace that in fact what we say and do there's no way to live our values if we don't read below from ceo doug dancing our word on racial equity 12th of june 20 as in zero hedge walmart abandons unprofitable chicago stores after investing hundreds of millions in the city Uh, I cannot ignore that this reflects Africa, which has had $77 trillion in aid pumped into it and has not turned it off. Zimbabwe, I think, recently offered a big, like $300 million package or $36 million or million or something to get the white powers to come back. So. And then, of course, there is former Bay Area mayor and cannabis entrepreneur convicted of child sex abuse. <laughs> how can I not associate that with marijuana? You guys have no idea how many fucking articles that I screenshot and say because they get scrubbed from the internet, almost like there's this plutocracy that is actively using Google to destroy the evidence of the harms of marijuana because they are using marijuana as a tool for social engineering. They are specifically using it in smaller parts of a larger planet. internet ever forgets <laughs> anyway uh, who knows who knows what will happen hmm <sighs>